Hello everybody, Dr. Mike here. Hoping you're all staying safe in the plague zone. Uh, this is the first of hopefully several little videos that I'm doing from Subterranean Scumbarge Studios featuring this really wonderful keyboard that I have here for a little while. This is the Hydrosynth from Ashen Sound Machines, a new manufacturer. Uh, and I have to say for a debut product, this beast is extraordinary. Um, I'm loving it. I, I can't remember the last time that a uh, synthesizer just knocked me flat from the get-go and which I've only gotten to love more as I've played with it. Uh, this is a digital synthesizer uh, with a primary emphasis on performance. Uh, it's got a fairly deep programming interface and it can do fairly weird bleepy bloopy sounds but what really struck me most is that Overall, it has a performance interface that is very reminiscent of the Yamaha CS80. And I'm gonna go there right away so that I don't have to go to it later. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar with the CS80, it was the first even slightly programmable polyphonic analog synthesizer. Yamaha put it out in the uh, mid 70s. Uh, at the time, they cost about $5,000, which in modern funds would be about $25,000, um, which is about what a new, what a like new one in good condition goes for. They're very finicky, very heavy, very hard to keep in repair, but they're gorgeous. And one of the reasons why the CS80 was as beautiful as it was, was because the performance interface, the way the player interacted with the synthesizer was unique and extremely musical, which is why Vangelis owns six of them, two of which he cannibalizes for parts. Uh, practically everything he's ever done uh, has been done on a CS80, and he's a master of the, uh, the many easy and intuitive ways you can tweak sounds, and I think that that was probably the primary influence for the Hydrosynth. It's got a four octave keyboard, which has polyphonic aftertouch, meaning each note you play uh, can be emphasized with slight variations in pressure rather than all of them responding no matter where you hit. So you have something that you can do like this. The other uh, obvious takeaway from the CS80 is the ribbon controller. Um, the CS80's ribbon controller was interesting because the CS80 used linear rather than logarithmic uh, voltage control of uh, oscillator frequency. What that means in basic terms is instead of turning up the voltage by one volt and going one octave each time, it did things in a certain number of hertz. So, you know, when you when you doubled the voltage, you didn't go up by a certain number of octaves, you went up by a certain frequency. So what that means is, whereas on a, a logarithmic synthesizer, a ribbon might allow you to go up one octave, and down one octave, so from A440, you could go up one octave to A880, or down to A220. But on the CS80, what you would have is you'd start with 440 hertz, and if you went up, you'd add 440 hertz, which gets you again to A880, so that's up an octave. But if you go in the other direction, you start at 440 hertz and you go to 440 hertz minus 440 hertz, which is zero, which is DC. 
And that allows you to do, you know, an octave up sweep or these enormous down bends that are used all the time on Vangelis' soundtrack uh, albums. Now, as of right now, you cannot do that with a CS80 yet, but with the two octave sweep up and down, you can get pretty darn close because like the CS80, you don't have to start at zero in the center. The ribbon is capable of making zero wherever you put your finger. So you can do something like this. <laughs> up two octaves, or you can start up here. Go down four octaves. So it's a nifty uh, interface that's very easy to use. One of the things you can do with it is actually set it up in theremin mode, so you can actually play the synthesizer as if it were, you know, a ribbon controlled device. I think theremin is probably the wrong word. It would be more like a Moog ribbon controller or an Ondes Martino. The overall impression I get from this machine is that it's really designed to be just played. And uh, I'll show you guys the front panel a little later. I'll talk about some of the options you have. But for right now, I'm just going to channel Mr. V for a little bit and I hope you'll all bear with me. Just so much fun. Anyway, I'll be talking more about this beastie in upcoming pieces. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay connected.